We've seen the influence of hip hop music expanded to many industries, from clothing and sneakers to liquor and electronics. But now there's a new frontier, video gaming, and it could be the biggest one yet. This music video, a tribute to one of the most popular games in the world, Fortnite, is by Lil Yachty, Ski Mask the Slump God, and Young Bands. Top music producer Murda Beats incorporated the game's original theme into the rap version, part of the growing relationship between hip hop and gaming. It makes perfect sense says expert Cherie L. Smith. Because it's lucrative. Um, you have cameos, you can provide a soundtrack, you can make your own video game. And gaming is so mainstream in America, you can reach so many more potential fans than you ever could on Spotify or iTunes or Tidal. In the new NBA 2K19, hip hop artist 2 Chains and Rhapsody join forces with LeBron James in a win-win for everyone. Industry powerhouse and champion player hip hop gamer says other artists are starting to pay attention. Cool factor played a big role in it, but it's the money, the attention, the value, and the engagement. It's beneficial for them. It's also fun, and it also gives them an opportunity to grow their brand. And that right there helps them become sustainable no matter where they go in the form of entertainment. The king of battle rap, Murda Mook, grew up playing video games. He sees similarities with his art form. Both are about winning. Video games is another way of, of the competitive aspect, and I think it's a way of like uh, getting your frustration out, too. Hip-hop artists have even more incentive to tap into the trend. At a time when some have trouble filling large venues, gaming fans are packing the stands. League of Legends or Counter-Strike Go, which is also known as CSGO, all these arena-style games, they are selling out stadiums. People are paying to go watch these people play competitively. Evolving technology, which transformed the music industry, is also transforming gaming with the growing popularity of live gaming. If you look at music in the way it was and the way it is now, we're talking about how many streams you got, not how many albums you're selling. So everything is different. So if you look at like Twitch and YouTube and a uh, mixer uh, that's backed by Microsoft, these new platforms allow you to engage with your audience in a whole new way. Gaming isn't just about recreation, it's also about creating new opportunities. Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me is Hip Hop Gamer. He's a video game champion and gaming journalist. Hip Hop Gamer, great to have you on the show. Love you, Lisa. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. We love you and we love the belt, too. Thank you for bringing the belt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> also with us is Cherie L. Smith. She's an editor of Laptop Magazine and Tom's Guide and also a games and tech journalist. Cherie, great to have you with us. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. Great to have you with us. Also with us is the one and only Murder Mook, the king of battle rap. He's a video gaming enthusiast and if you have any doubts at all that Murder Mook is the king of battle rap you can tune into his pay-per-view because the live thing is sold out yeah. August 18th Rare Breed Entertainment yes link on your Instagram Murder yes. Mook Easy yes I mean hello how you doing Lisa man I'm doing you great know how it is, man. you're always a winner always yeah, winner. that's what we do Mook great to have you with us of course man great to be here great to really great to have you Absolutely. with us thank you so much Sheree I want to start with you on this how big is the connection or what do you see happening with hip hop and video gaming? Um, I think the connection has always been there. It started small with seeing product placement like Beats headphones, so Beats by Dre, and then uh, the industry started turning to rappers and hip hop artists for uh, soundtracks. So Madden is a big example. Uh, NBA 2K is a big example. Uh, it just goes in hand in hand with the culture. Like sports games has been leading the charge on getting hip hop in front of a mainstream audience of video gamers so it's even more than just sport it's it's even more than just the music and video gaming there's the whole sports sports involvement too yeah absolutely so like what I, the first thing I would say this is my goal is to take it beyond just sports it's always sports always sports so when Drake and Ninja did their thing with Fortnite that was a big, big crossover. Mm -hmm. So to me, I feel like the more we open our minds and explore, then the more value that the music industry could get from gaming, and then the more gaming can bring value to everywhere else. And Mook, tell us yeah. about how did you how did you get involved in gaming? I mean, you know, from, I'm pretty much, it might be the same story from everyone when you when you're young, you know, from uh, my first game system was, uh, I had Atari, no, I, well, my, cu my big cousin had Atari. <laughs> but the first game system I'm, um, that my, my uh, aunt bought me was a uh, 
Nintendo. Right. You know. Facts. And, you know, I just, you know, started playing from there. I, I played Ninja Gaiden, Mario. You know, Super I was Mario already, Brothers? Yeah, no, but Ninja Gaiden really was my, you know, that. I, I used to play Jason. You know what I mean? I had the Friday the 13th game. And oh, I hated that game. Yeah, though, I, I, like I was, they, they I was it was kind of scary, though, to be honest. You used to have to stand in front of the door. Yeah. I remember that. Like, you know, I still remember that. Then, you know, you went to Sega. And then, you know, you Sega obviously, Genesis. we know Sonic, you know, Sonic had to have yeah. that. And then, you know, and then it just went all the way, all the way just up until now. You know, I had every game system of it, like available. And all my friends got all the game systems. And they, like my friends are even, even my family, like they like, 50, 60, 70 years old, they still want to play video games. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and they, I don't know. That's just what it is. And it, 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 exactly. Sheree, what about the what the demographic of who's, you know, Mook is talking about generations consuming video games and using them and enjoying them. But tell us about who, who are the main users and what do you see happening industry-wide? Well, the demographic is shifting because for many years you were here to tell tale that it was white men from 18 to 35, but that is really not the case, especially nowadays. Uh, women gamers are growing at an exponential rate African Americans, we spend about a billion dollars on gaming because it's a cheap form of entertainment. Like, yes, after the initial cost of getting a console or getting a PC uh, and getting the game, that's still hours of entertainment compared to going to a, to the movies, which is the tickets, the food, this and that, the transportation, transportation and right. all. Like, it's still one of the cheapest forms of entertainment that you can get out there, and it, you can get hours of entertainment from the right game. Right, and, 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 and then bringing people in, too. Hip Hop Gamer, tell, tell us about the, the way that the games are played now, too, because it's not just like you're, you're, uh, you're, so the live, the well, live yeah, gaming no, is a big deal. So well, like, what's the main, tell us what's the newest cutting edge thing. Um, just the social aspect. Mm -hmm. That changes everything. So me, I stream literally, literally like every day, you know what I'm saying? And you build these relationships. With and expl all explain that for people who are, don't know anything about video oh, games. Okay, so like if I'm playing on PC or PlayStation, whatever, they have the ability where you can, um, um, stream to Twitch or you can stream to YouTube and um, it's a game stream <clears throat> it's a game streaming service so what you do is when you stream there's a lot of people that want to watch you play the game and sometimes they just want to watch you so like if Murder Moot streams and stuff like that because of who he is well, I just want to watch him like, even if he's good at the game or not I just want to talk with him and build that relationship so that's the actual value building a relationship and also these games cost $60 a pop so if you showing them off the game and the game is hot and you say it's hot and you playing it? Oh, it's a wrap. Let me go get that. So, so it's, like a it's, it's like a commercial too. Yeah. It's it's Oh you know. yeah, yeah. It's like a commercial, but you can also, depending on what platform you're using, um, people can donate to your stream. So like a Patreon basically. So if you have costs, like let's say, okay, I'm streaming, but I want I really want to get a new mic or I really want to <clears> get a new camera to make the make it better for my viewers, yep. I can say, yes. Hey, I have this stream, this is where you can donate and I can get this better equipment and it'll be better for all of us. A lot of people are making uh, some, some not substantial like like everybody make, there's people that are making like buku dollars but yeah. you can make a decent stream if you are dedicated Whoa, I, you know, I didn't even, I, I, you yeah. know, it's like, wow, this whole I different world. I see the wheels world. turning, around. Yeah, you I know, see the dollar so signs like, clicking. Of course, you know, I'm from Harlem, man. Like, I keep like, saying, man, once we start, I was trying to figure out, like, whoa, there's money in this, like that? Because if Mook does it, like, he doesn't even have to talk about, he can play the game, he, but he doesn't even have to talk about gaming. People want to talk to him about his battle rap. People want right. to talk about to him about his greatest battles or, like, words of wisdom for people. Like, it could be so much more. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm going to say something right now, and this right here, I I think will be like, I think this is the part where hopefully it clicks for everybody. So like you have a lot of, um, you know, people in the clubs, whether you're a DJ, whether you, um, you know, trying to figure out a new way to make money in your life. You could get on a stream and there's like a lot of people that will get like a thousand dollar donation if they get to the next level. Like so a game like Dark Souls <clears throat> or Bloodborne, these games are designed for you to die. Yes. And people watch people die all the time in the game for their laugh and satisfaction. Okay, and they but get you're paid and you're, to do that. And you're you're bringing up that point which has got to bring me up one of the, one of the criticisms of video games has been the violence in so many of them. Do all of them have violence? No. no. Oh, oh, oh. Yo, let me tell you this right now. All right, so check this out, right? <laughs> so yo, yo, I'm gonna tell you right now, one of the best, best games 
out right now is this game called Life is Strange. I oh, love I Life, Life is Strange. Yeah. So the Life is Strange is about a girl. Um, she is in college. So you playing as a girl in college and she's trying to figure it out. But she has the ability to rewind time. So let's say something happens and you're like, Dag, let me change my mind. But then it's like, you change your mind and be like, wait, dang, I shouldn't have did that. So it's, it's not like some of these other games, like people that like Call of Duty or you know, nah. where, where it's like the number of kills that you you know your score is based on kills, right? Yeah, 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 in Call of Duty, but that's that type of game. I mean, yeah. like there are games, uh, there are emotional games, like that. Dragon Cancer is a great example where it's basically about. Um, it was created by these parents who lost their son to cancer and um, just. Oh, basically yeah. wow. going through their journey of like trying to cope and trying to keep a stiff up, stiff upper lip and just trying to be emotionally strong for their child. While they they turn that into a video game? Yes. The, wow. Like it's a thing called emotional video games where it's not so much, uh, it's basically telling you a story and trying to get uh, to elicit an emotional reaction from you to just th like empathy. Right, yeah. it's to, it's to take you through your feelings, or, exactly, Absolutely. and to and to show the, show their journey the way they would show like a character's journey, exactly. or, so, or something like that. Are those growing in popularity? They are growing in popularity. Um, they it's really bolstering the idea of games as art, which is a movement that I mean, right now there's a uh, the Smithsonian has a video game museum to the 20 some odd years, well 30 some odd years, that we've been playing games and, be, and um, it's full of art and old consoles and prototypes and it, it's really something to see. Oh, that's, that's incredible. Sure. All right, this is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We'll be back right after this. Gaming is about to change the value of music, period, and entertainment. In terms of the types of video games and the parallel to hip hop, you know, you got your people that like their old school music, you have your people that like their, you know, current music from today, you have people that like both. But is there is there an equivalent in, in terms of gaming? Absolutely. Like so, Donkey Kong or something? Oh yeah, like you can go back that far. <laughs> but um one thing I want to talk about because it relates to what's going on now, but um one of the old school games that people wanted to come back was Dev Jam, Fight for yes. New York. And Dev Jam has been tweeting about what would you want to see? What characters would you want in a new Dev Jam game? Um, I had conversations with EA and Aki. Uh, Aki is the company that built the engine that the game runs on. So uh, I can't, I don't want to confirm yet because I don't want to get nobody in trouble, but uh, stay tuned for 2019. I think EA smartened up, and we may get the return of Dev Jam. And the way that relates to, ne the way that relates to now is because back in the day, when you played Dev Jam Fight for New York, we didn't have like the online capabilities. We, there's a lot of things that we didn't have. Now we got those things. So to see that come back for this generation, I think it's gonna uh, create a scenario where more people is gonna see that value and get involved. What about, do you see a trend like artists doing stuff like that? Well, I mean. Are you thinking about it? <laughs> you, see, I mean, you, you, you saw me. I, was, I know. I know you're thinking you know, about. I, I just, you know, as far as you know, as what you're saying with the Dev Jam, but I feel, you know, I feel like we in a we in a in a time now where everything is bypassing, you know, the middleman. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to just be independence on everything. Right. You know. And, you know. And that's just where it's going to have to be. So it's going. Absolutely. You know. So it's really going to be the fight for independence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what it's really going to have to be because. You know, let me not even try to give away any of that. No, no, but, right. I mean, like, no, but you're saying like you, you you can be an artist and you can distribute your own music online. You don't need to wait for a record label deal. Same thing happening with video games. Yeah, that's right. That's, where you can absolutely. create. Should we te in terms of the technology, is that more enabled now because of the technology? Absolutely. Explain uh, that for us. So engines like uh, Unity, which is made by Epic, and uh, they're very it's very inexpensive to get into. Um, all you really need is a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of coding know-how, and you. Can make your own game and in some cases uh Mo media molecule the people who make uh little big planet they're actually coming out with a new game called dreams that you can make 
all kinds of genres of video games. I've demoed it at E3 this year. I In that one game, I played a, a horror game. I played an old school action game. I played a point and click. And it has all the tools you need to make your own video game. You can even lay your own tracks. You can like the fit like physics in the whole nine. Yep. So I'm really, really excited for that game and the the multitude of games that it could potentially uh, create. And more importantly, I'm excited to see more black and brown faces in the industry making games because we like we as a people black and brown people we consume so much but if we would just sit down and just make we could take over the world in terms of hip-hop and video gaming which artists do you think have had the best video games? Have there been enough of them to even rank, Cherie? Ooh. Ooh, well, I mean, Def Jam um, Fight for New York was amazing because you you had Ludacris, you had Busted, you had LL, you had all these like titans, icons of the game in a, in a wrestling game. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> Yo. um, like um, David Banner, he was like this brawler, yes. and he had this finisher where he just just wail on you and just step on you, just and just spit a verse right afterward. It was it was so <laughs> dope. It was so crazy. <laughs> it was so good. But um, of course, Fifty Cent had two games. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, like I said before, uh, Def Jam is still at the pinnacle that we always talk about, but 50 Cent, and if you look at his TV show Power, I don't see how he's not looking to bring power into the world of g video games. Into like a, a video game. Ooh. What about like, what about what about uh, we we saw Lil Yachty with the make, making the music video with Fortnite using oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about mm -hmm. that Mook? Why do you think artists are so interested in this? Uh, I think I mean obviously I, the children. You know, like the you know the demographics for you know, the music nowadays is you know they're young kids, so they growing up playing video games just like the rest of us. But because of the industry of hip hop became so big, you know, and the independence from hip hop, it's easier for new artists to be out. Remember before, you know, you had to go through this whole process, you know, come artist development and things. So you know, they were coming out young, but it was coming, they weren't coming out at the rapid rate that artists are coming out now. So now they can, and plus we have so way available and so much information and so much uh, social media you can be on anybody, you can look at anybody you want. So we just notice it now, you know, as far as everybody's life is very public, you know, and that's more so than before where, you know, you had to kind of like dive into somebody's life to see them or they, they only let you see a what, certain, a but certain, a certain part yeah, of it. That, but what about, what about in terms of, in terms of you as, as the king of battle rap? Yeah. Is there certain similarities between being really great as a battle rapper and being really great as a video gaming champion? I mean, um, I guess I'm being competitive. All like, you know, co competition is the the I guess the number one yeah, should be absolutely. the factor. But that's in life. That's in anything. You know, right. like why do you you know you want to be the best journalist or you want to be the best something if you have comp that's competition. So video games it builds that. And battle rap is the same thing. It's competition. We wanna we wanna be great. We wanna win. We like to win. <laughs> tell you what's about to happen so y'all can really pay attention watch listen to this right okay the way jay -Z, is there like i don't see the crystal ball but okay you know <laughs> <laughs> so the way i'm paying attention the way mm. jay-z you know uh changed and elevated hip-hop with him and damon dash and how they brought rockefeller clothing and it started changing the value of an artist right gaming is about to change the value of music period and entertainment facts watch and I'm with that. And you're with that. Because I, I, I see that. And, and Once we had this conversation, I'm with that. I, 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 you know, I can see. I can see. So I'm good. I'm, no, I saw that. I'm seeing yeah. the lights go yeah. off. In the, <laughs> I want to thank our panel for being with us for this episode of Street Soldiers. Hip Hop Gamer, great to have you. Thank you so much. Um, Sheree L. Smith, great to have you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Murder Mook, thank you so much for being thank with you. us. Thank you. And I got to thank you always for, for supporting us with Street Soldiers, yes. with our push for peace, yes. and for coming through for us all the time. Thank so you. we thank really you. appreciate it. I appreciate and you. We know you're going to win on August 18th, but yeah. you know, I know it's going to be a good, a good, good uh, yeah, experience. Yeah, it's cool. I'll make yeah. it. 
Interesting. Good bail. I know you will. We, <laughs> we definitely know that. I mean, anyway, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, this is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace. <laughs>